Welcome to Credit Matters. I'm Mike Skirbo, Senior Director, Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Group. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the turmoil in the Middle East and what impact this could have on rated tanker operators. I'm joined by Fumi Afanja, who's a director in our transportation team based here in New York. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Mike. Let's first talk a little bit about, obviously, the Suez Canal is pretty important to mm -hmm. shipping oil and, and refined products. Maybe provide some context, provide some color to that. Sure. Uh, the Suez Canal is a fairly important gateway to the transportation of crude oil and petroleum products, moving them from the Persian Gulf as well as the Far East to Europe and to the U.S., both of which account for roughly 50% of global crude oil consumption. So it's a very important passageway um, to those economies. Furthermore, uh, the Suez Canal, a disruption to the Suez Canal would potentially uh, result in the movement of those products um, from other regions of the world, such as the west coast of Africa, Venezuela, um, to their respective destinations, and it would likely cause the uh, rerouting of ships down the Cape of Good Hope and all the way back up north. Um, and rerouting those ships, of course, puts them into uh, smack in the middle of uh, pirate water territories, which then creates yet another set of uh, potential problems. But on the flip side, um, it does provide some opportunity for tanker operators because of the longer ton mile traveled and the potential for increased utilization and so forth. So, so maybe there. So you're saying a potential disruption to the canal could potentially benefit tanker operators? Absolutely, so without maybe a doubt. provide some, just clarify that. Sure. The way it will work is, is, is this hypothetically. If there's a disruption to the canal, mm -hmm. vessels will then have to find an alternative route. Most likely they would have to travel down the coast of Africa down the coast of Cape of Good Hope to try to make it to Europe or to the U.S. What that invariably means is that those ships are going to travel a longer ton miles, which actually takes out excess capacity from the market, increases vessel utilization, and then supports tanker rates. Mm -hmm. So in a roundabout way, it's actually quite beneficial if there's a sustained disruption to the canal to tanker operators. Interesting. I want to. I want to also. Uh, you mentioned something about pirates. Yes. Uh, ongoing risk of, of pirate um, attacks or, or, or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, a seizing of ships. Mm -hmm. How has it impacted ship operators, and who's paying for the rising operating costs of this ongoing risk? Absolutely. Well, the rise of the Somali pirates, as they are often called, is something that has increasingly become a problem within the tanker uh, sector. Uh, Pirates are becoming more brazen, uh, they are using more force, and that's creating a whole new slew of costs that tanker operators now have to contend with. Uh, one of the key elements in that is the fact that now many tanker operators often have to take on war risk insurance to travel through those waters, and they've also had to retrofit their vessels with things such as uh, barbed wires, high pressure uh, water hoses, and in some cases have actually actually had to bring in armed professional security guards on board. In some circumstances, um, operators have been able to uh, transfer some of those costs to their customers, but in some circumstances, they actually have to bear the course. Keep in mind that the most uh, important cost variable for a tanker operator is fuel. And as many of these tanker operators have to make a longer voyage down the Horn of Africa to get to their respective destinations, um, they now are having higher fuel costs. So as an example, um, the average cost of bunker fuel uh, is now at about $600 a ton, and a year ago that was at about $450 a ton. Um, depending on the kind of charter coverage that a, uh, an operator might have, um, in the case of a time charter, they are actually able to pass those costs directly to their customers. However, for operators in the on the spot market, um, it's a little bit tricky. So now we are what we call in a weak tanker market environment. So the ability to transfer those costs to uh, customers is a little bit more difficult because market rates might not support 
um, higher overall cost to the customers. So depending on the market environment. So we're basically seeing a mix of tanker operators being able to pass along some of those costs to the customers and in other cases not being able to pass the cost to the customers. Sure. How have these trends, if at all, impacted ratings? So far, right. Orders. So far, the rated um, tanker operators have not been affected by ratings. However, we do remain very vigilant in terms of understanding the risks in the marketplace and how it could potentially affect not the tanker sector as an industry, how we evaluate and view it, and also potential financial risks. I say that to give you an example. In 2005, the average ransom that uh, tanker operators had to give to pirates was about $150,000. In 2010, November 2010, there was a record ransom of about $9.5 million paid to pirates. Um, if you think of a VLCC, which is a very large crude carrier, which might carry about $200 million worth of crude, a $9.5 million ransom is just under 5% of the value of the cargo on board. So it's now becoming more of an increasing risk. And so understanding the dynamics of that and who will bear the burden is something that we are very interested in observing as sort of we move into this whole new norm of, uh, you know, high risk on the high high seas, if you will. Um, so, but fortunately, thus far, our rated operators have not been affected, and we continue to monitor developments, not just with the pirate situation, but in Egypt, as well as other geopolitical risks that could affect tanker operators. Oh, well, appreciate you joining. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. We'll see you again next time.